Hey there. Are you ready to take a deep dive with us today? I'm ready. Let's dive in. Okay, so we are looking at MovieGen today. This is Meta's new AI research project. Yeah, this one's really interesting, I think. So tell me, like, in a nutshell, what is MovieGen? Well, basically, it's this AI that can generate videos from, like, text prompts. Yeah. You're kind of similar to how those image generators work. Okay. But obviously, video has a lot more... Uh, you know, a lot more going on. Yeah, there are more layers to it. Way more layers. It's way more complex. Right, right. But at its core, that's what it's doing. Okay, so you give it some text and it spits out a video. Yeah, exactly. Wow. It's amazing what they've been able to achieve. And just from like looking at, you know, Meta's webpage and some of the stuff that they've released on this, it sounds like you can make like custom videos, you can edit existing videos, you can even like turn your photos into videos with this. Yeah, and that's that's one of the really I think that's one of the really mind blowing things about this. It's like, you know, it can take your instructions and apply them to, you know, existing footage or mm -hmm. even still images. Oh wow. And it can generate things from scratch too, you know, just from your descriptions. It's really impressive. Okay. That's really cool. So it's like having a Hollywood like special effects team at your fingertips. It really is. And you know, it's not just about, you know, flashy effects either. Oh, okay. It's about um being able to control and manipulate video mm -hmm. in ways that, you know, we could only dream of before. Okay, so we talked about, like, the what now, right? Mm. It's like, movie gen, it creates videos from text prompts. So yeah. now, like, how does it actually work? I know we've got the research paper in front of us, but it is, I will say, pretty technical. It is. It's very, very technical, but we can, you know, we can break it down a little bit. Yeah, let's break it down. So let's start with, like, the core of what movie gen is. Okay, so at its heart, MovieGen is this massive AI model. And when I say massive, I mean it's built on 30 billion parameters. It's 30 billion. Okay. That's huge, even for AI. Wow. And it's been trained on this like enormous data set of images, videos, and audio. And that's what allows it to like learn the relationships between those things and generate these really realistic videos. So is that kind of like we've been hearing all this stuff about large language models, right? Yeah. Like Llama. It's kind of like that, but instead of words, it's doing visuals and movement and audio. Exactly. It's building on a lot of the same technology yeah. as large language models. Mm. But it has to deal with, like, you know, motion. It has to deal with time. Right. It has to deal with synchronizing audio. So it's like a whole other level of complexity on top of that. Yeah, because you can't just, like, stitch together a couple of still images, right? No, no, not at all. It has to be fluid. It has to flow naturally. Yeah, like if you watch a movie that's not edited well, it can be really jarring. Exactly. And MovieGen has to figure all of that out on its own. And speaking of movies, I was really interested when I was reading through the stuff about MovieGen audio. Yes. Tell me a little bit more about that, because it's not just like slapping on, you know, some royalty-free music to your video, right? Yeah. No, not at all. This is like, it can create original music. Wow. It can create sound effects that are synced to your video. Mm -hmm. It even understands the concept of diegetic sound. You know, like the sounds that are actually happening within the world of the video. Like Foley sound. Yeah, exactly. So if you have a video of, say, a glass shattering, MovieGen can actually generate the sound of the glass breaking and it'll be timed perfectly to the action. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's very, very cool. So it's paying attention to like all the details, not just like, here's a video, here's some background music. It's looking at the whole package, the whole experience, really. Okay, so now let's talk about something else that I thought was really interesting, and that is this personalized video aspect. Okay. I'll be honest, when I read that, I was like, how? Yeah, it sounds a little too good to be true. <laughs> Yeah, it sounds like science fiction almost. It does. Yeah. But they actually break down how this works in the paper. Oh, okay. And basically, you could imagine uploading a picture of yourself. Okay. And then telling MovieGen, okay, make a video of me doing X, Y, and Z. Okay. And it'll actually map your facial features and try to create a realistic representation of you doing that thing. Wow. So you could star in your own, like, action movie or something. Exactly. Or you could, you know, practice giving a speech to a large audience. Right. There are all sorts of possibilities there. That's amazing. So, okay, we've talked about what it can do. It can make custom videos. It can do personalized videos, all from these text prompts. Now let's dive into the how, which is, I mean, I'm sure incredibly complex. It's very complex. There's a reason there's, like, a whole research paper on it. Yeah, exactly. So what are some of the things that they had to do to even make this possible? Well, one of the big things is the data. They had to train this on a massive amount of data. Okay. 
How much are we talking? Like gigabytes, terabyte. We're talking billions of images. Wow. Millions of video clips. So it's an enormous amount of data that they had to feed this thing. Okay. And it's not just about the quantity, it's about the quality too. They had to be very careful about what data they used. Because you can't just feed it anything, right? Right. Like you don't want to just take any old video off the internet and feed it into this thing. Yeah. They had to be really selective about the quality of the videos, the types of videos they were using. So did they like specifically look for certain things? Yeah. They were looking for high quality videos, videos that get a lot of motion, videos that weren't, you know, just like a static image with some text on them. Right. They really had to curate this data set carefully to make sure that MovieGen was learning from the best possible examples. So that's like a huge task in itself, right? Oh, yeah. That's a whole other area of research, just like data collection and data cleaning for AI. Yeah. That's a huge field in itself. Wow. So they had to find all this data. They had to clean it all up. Yep. And then so w walk me through like, OK, so they've got this data. How do they actually go about training MovieGen? OK, so they use something called a multi-stage training process, which sounds complicated. It does sound complicated. It is kind of complicated. But the basic idea is they didn't just throw all this data at MovieGen at once and say, OK, figure it out. Right. They broke it down into stages. OK. It's kind of like, you know, if you were training for a marathon, you wouldn't just go out and try to run 26 miles on day one. Right. You'd start small. You would start small. You would gradually build up your endurance. And that's kind of what they did here. OK. So they eased MovieGen into it. What did those stages look like? So the first stage was all about text to image generation. OK. So basically teaching it the relationship between words and images. Right. Because it kind of has to learn the visual language first, right? Exactly. It needs to understand like, OK, if I say the word cat, you know, what does that look like visually? If I say running, what does that look like? Right. So that was the first stage. Get that foundation in place. Then once they felt like it had a good grasp of that, they moved on to this joint text-to-image and text-to-video training. Oh, okay, so it's leveling up. Yeah, exactly. So now they're introducing the video element. So how does that work? So in this stage, they started feeding it pairs of text descriptions and videos. Okay. But instead of just showing it the whole video at once, they broke the videos down into individual frames. Okay. And so MovieGen is learning to associate the words with like specific visual elements within the video and how those elements change over time. Okay, so it's learning about that transition between frames and what makes that smooth and not janky. Exactly, that's a really important concept. This is like temporal consistency. Right. You know, you don't wanna have videos where things are jumping around randomly. Like a bad slideshow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly, it needs to flow smoothly. Okay. So they're training it on these individual frames, teaching it how to create these smooth transitions between frames. Okay, but like how, I don't know, like technically, how do you even begin to teach an AI to do that? Well, they used a couple of really interesting techniques. One is something called a temporal discriminator. Okay. Which is basically like a second AI model that's watching the videos that MovieGen is creating. Oh, okay. And it's providing feedback. Mm -hmm. So if MovieGen creates a video where the motion is really jerky, the discriminator will be like, nope, that's not right. Try again. Try again. Right, so sure. that's helping MovieGen learn to create these smoother transitions. So it's like MovieGen's film school professor. Exactly. It's getting that constant feedback. That's cool. Okay. So it starts with text to image, then they move on to this joint text to video. And it's learning, like you said, the temporal consistency, how to make things flow. Yeah. What's the final stage of this whole process? So the final stage is what they call fine tuning. Okay. And basically, at this point, MovieGen has already learned the basics of video creation from this massive data set. Right. But to really polish its skills, they then fine tuned it on a smaller, carefully curated set of really high quality videos. So it's like going from like the student filmmaker to like the seasoned Hollywood director. Exactly. That's awesome. OK, so that's kind of the overview of how they train it. But obviously there are like a million technical challenges that they had to overcome to even make this possible. Oh, yeah, tons. So let's talk about a few of those. And one thing that I saw mentioned in the research paper was this thing called a temporal autoencoder. What is that? So a temporal autoencoder, you can think of it as like a really efficient way to compress and decompress videos. Okay. Because remember, they're working with millions of videos, right? Right. Massive amounts of data. And video files are huge. Oh, yeah. Like a single video yeah. can be gigabytes and gigabytes of data. Right. So trying to process all of that raw video data mm -hmm. would just like 
bring even the most powerful computers to their knees. Yeah. So they need a way to like shrink those files down, make them more manageable without losing too much detail. Okay, so it's kind of like zipping the file essentially, but for video. Yeah, exactly. It's like creating a much smaller representation of the video that still captures all the important information. Okay, that makes sense. And then they can decompress it when they need to. And that doesn't affect the quality of the video at all. Well, it can affect the quality a little bit, but they've gotten really good at minimizing that loss. That's really cool. Okay, so that's the temporal autoencoder. What are some other like technical hurdles that they had to overcome? So another big one is dealing with artifacts. What does that mean, artifacts? So artifacts are like, you know those weird little glitches or distortions that you sometimes see in like AI-generated hmm. images or videos? Oh, like the weird hands that it always draws or something? Yeah, exactly. Things that just look a little bit off, not quite right. Okay. And those are really hard to avoid when you're generating video, hmm. especially with AI. Got it. So they had to develop all these different techniques to try and minimize these artifacts. Like what? What kind of techniques? Well, one is something called adversarial training, which is kind of cool. It's basically where they have two AI models that are like competing against each other. Oh, interesting. One AI model is trying to generate the video frames. Yeah. And the other AI model is trying to spot the fakes, basically. Oh, wow. Okay. And so by having these two models compete, it forces the video generation model to get better and better at creating realistic looking videos. That's really cool. Like a little AI battle to make the best video possible. Exactly. It's like this constant arms race between these two models. So that's one way they're dealing with artifacts. What else? Well, they also had to figure out how to deal with the massive amount of data that they were using for training. Right. Because you said billions of images, yeah. millions of videos. That's, that's crazy. Yeah. And so just managing all that data, like storing it, processing it. Yeah. That's a huge challenge in itself. So how did they organize all of it? So... They use a bunch of different techniques. One is something called bucketization. Bucketization, okay. Which is basically, oh. imagine you have like a giant bin of Legos. Yeah, Right. okay. And they're all mixed up. Yeah, a night. You're trying to find like a specific piece. Right. It takes forever. It would take forever. Yeah. So instead of have this giant bin of Legos, mm -hmm. you could organize them into smaller buckets. Right. Based on size or color or whatever makes sense. Yeah, that makes way more sense. So that's essentially what they did with the video data. They grouped similar videos together. Okay. Based on things like aspect ratio or length. <laughs> okay, so like all the widescreen ones go here, all the you know square videos go here. Got it. Yeah, exactly. So it just makes it much easier to manage and process that data. Okay, that's really clever. And then because they are dealing with video, did they have to take into account like the frame rate and stuff too? Oh yeah, absolutely. They had yeah. to create special buckets based on frame rate, which is like, you know, how many frames per second the video is playing at. Right. Because that can vary a lot. It does vary a lot. And so they had to make sure that MovieGen could handle all of these different frame rates. Okay, so that's like a whole other level of complexity. Yeah. That they had to like build into the system. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so we've talked about how they trained it, some of the technical challenges. This is all super fascinating. Mm. But I think now it's time to like zoom out a little bit and talk about like, okay, this is all really cool, but what does it actually mean for like, you know, us, for the average person? Right, what's the impact gonna be? Yeah, where do you about? see this going? Yeah, where do you see this going? Like, is this something that, you know, I'm gonna be using to make like YouTube videos next year or is this, you know, way farther out than that? Well, right now it's still in the research phase, so you can't like download it and use it yet. But I think if and when they do release it to the public, it has the potential to be huge. Okay. I mean, imagine, you know, anyone being able to create, like, really high-quality videos. Yeah, that would change, like, everything. It would change everything, right? Like, advertising, education, entertainment. Just, like, think about yeah. YouTube, right? Like, anyone could make, like, a Hollywood-level movie, potentially. Exactly. Or, like, educational content could be so much more engaging and effective if you could create these, like, custom videos. Yeah, that's true. It's like, instead of me just talking to you on a podcast, there could be, like, amazing visuals happening. Exactly. Okay, so that's, like, the really exciting, you know, pie-in-the-sky stuff. But, you know, any new technology comes with potential downsides, too, right? Yeah, definitely. And I think one of the big ones here is, like, how do we know what's real anymore? Oh, right. Because if anyone can create these like hyper realistic videos. Exactly. It's going to be harder and harder to tell what's real and what's fake. And like 
even if it's not malicious, right? Like, even if it's not someone trying to, like, spread misinformation, right. couldn't it just be, like, really easy to misinterpret things? Absolutely, yeah. Like, a video taken out of context could easily go viral. Yeah. Or, you know, maybe the AI misinterprets a facial expression or something. Uh, wow. Well, and suddenly you have this whole controversy over something that, like, it never even happened. Yeah, it's like... The whole seeing is believing thing is kind of out the window now. Yeah, exactly. So, like, how, I don't know, like, what do we do about that? Well, I think transparency is going to be really important. Like, we need to find ways to clearly label AI-generated content. Okay. So that people know, okay, this video, this might not be a real representation of what happened. Right, like a disclaimer almost. Exactly. Like, this video was created using AI. Something like that. Okay, so transparency is a big one. What else? And then... I think even more important than that is like media literacy. Like we need to be teaching people how to think critically about the media they consume. Yeah, to like question what they're seeing. Exactly. And to consider the source and just be, you know, more discerning consumers of information. Yeah, because it's easy to get caught up, right? Like you see a video mm. and it's like, oh, wow, that's crazy. Right. But then you have to take a step back and be like, wait a minute. Like, where did this come from? Is this real? Exactly. Exactly. And I think those skills are going to be more important than ever in this like AI generated world that we're moving into. It's like we need to like level up our BS detectors or something. Exactly. Well, that's a great point to end on. I think we've talked about the magic. We've talked about the possibilities, but also the potential pitfalls. Is there like one final thought you want to leave our listeners with today? I think the biggest thing is just to be aware. Like be aware of this technology be aware of its potential impact, both good and bad. Okay. And just, you know, be mindful of how you're using it and how you're interpreting it. Be aware. I like it. Short, simple, to the point. That's what we aim for. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show today and talking to us all about MovieGen. This has been like a really fascinating look into the future of AI. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's always fun to talk about this stuff. And for everyone listening, be sure to check out the next Deep Dive, where we'll be exploring another cutting-edge topic that's shaping our world. Until then, keep learning, keep questioning, and as always, thanks for diving deep with us.